This slide shows the formulas used to check for the shear resistance of the three critical sections of the power caps. What you see here is the formula used here are very identical to the formula that you use for the design of the pad footing as we have discussed in the previous video. There are three types of critical sections. Let us look into each of them one by one. For the critical sections located at pi per 5 offset from the column face, the shear load is actually generated by the reactions of these two power in resistance to the shear loads caused by the columns. However, Depending on the spacing between the columns, the shear enhancement can actually reduce the shear loads to AV per 2D. The AV here is referring to the distance from the column surface to the critical sections. And the D here is referring to the depth of the reinforcement bar from the top of the power caps. The shear loads acting on the critical sections will need to be checked against the shear resistance given by this formula. It will be the larger value of VRD concrete and VRD concrete minimum. The equations are given here. VRD concrete minimum has these equations where the K here is obtained from these equations in the functions of D. The K here needs to be less than 2.0 and the B here will be referring to the width of the power cap here. As for the D here will be the depth of the reinforcement bar. Next you need to determine the resistance of the concrete. The K here refers to this formula, while the row 1 here representing the amount of reinforcement bar. And S1 is the reinforcement bar provided in the power cap crossing the critical section. BD referring to the width of the power caps and the depth of the reinforcement bar. The rebar area, row 1, needs to be less than 0.02. Substitute the value into the formula for you to obtain VRDC. Substitute the value into the formula here to obtain VRDC mean. The larger value of the two will be the shear resistance of the power cap. And this is to be checked against the VED, which is vertical shear loads of the power caps. The resistance needs to be greater than the shear loads of the power cap, so that the power cap doesn't fail in shear. Next, we look into the punching shear at the perimeter of 2D from the column face. These are the equations. You will need to draw an imaginary line of 2D from the face of the column to determine the reactions of the power caps whether it falls outside the perimeter of 2D. If you refer to the table here, for the power spacing of less than 3 times the power size, it is most likely that the centroid of the reactions of the power caps fall within the 2T perimeter. And that is the reason that you do not need to design for the shear resistance of the perimeter 2D. That means the equations for the punching shear is meant for the case where the spacing is more than 3 times the power size. So you need to design for this. Your vertical shear loads is going to be equal to the 
summations of the reactions of the pulse which fall beyond the perimeter lines of 2D of the pulse caps. This is later to be converted into the stress by dividing the perimeter length U and the depth of reinforcement bar. The factor beta here will cater for the existence of the moment acting on the power caps. In the case that the power cap is not subjected to any moment, the beta will be equal to 1.0. In the case that the beta is subjected to the moment, you will need to use these formulas for you to calculate the beta which is the ratio of moment and the vertical load multiplied with the perimeter length divided by W1 which is given in this formula. The C1 and C2 here refers to the dimensions of the columns whether it is in the directions of the bending moment or perpendicular to it as illustrated in this diagram here. As for the K here, you can refer to this table. Get the ratio between C1 and C2. Obtain the K based on the interpolations. With that, you are able to determine the shear stress acting on the critical sections of 2D perimeter. Your shear resistance is given by this formula, which is exactly the same formula here. Convert it also to the shear stress. The resistance needs to be greater than the shear load. Next, we look into the punching shear at the column perimeter. This is given in the equation here. This part is the derivations for you to obtain the final equation here. Since we have already discussed about this for the PET foundations, we will discuss this. First, you will need to determine the shear load acting on the critical section. These shear loads will be equal to the total vertical load generated by the column. The shear load later needs to be converted into shear stress. It is done by dividing the load with the perimeter of the column surface, which is 2 times the B plus 2 times the H, and divided by the depth of the reinforcement bar to be multiplied with the beta. The equations of the beta is given here. In the case that there is no moment given, that means the beta will be equal to 1. If there is a moment, you will need to compute beta and it's going to be more than 1.0. This formula is very identical to this, except for the U0 and W1. The process for you to obtain the care is totally the same as here. As for the U node, is referring to the perimeter length of the column, while W1 is determined from this formula. The C1 and C2, you may refer to this diagram. With the shear stress computed, you will need to compare with the shear resistance, which is given by this formula. The factor alpha CC is equal to 1.0, while the factor gamma C, which is partial factor of safety of the concrete, is equal to 1 per 5. The shear resistance here needs to be greater than the shear loads so that the punching shear around the column perimeter is passed.